Okay, hi there. Welcome to a, a revision video. We're going to take a look at uh, how you can apply price elasticity of demand in your economics assignments, in the economics assessments coming up this summer. One of those key concepts that will have to form a, a big part of your revision as you start to go over the notes and the topics and things that you've covered in your economics. Uh, what, what do we mean? by price elasticity of demand, well, it's one of the most important concepts in economics. It uh, is a measure of the responsiveness or the sensitivity of the quantity demanded for a good or a service after a change in the product's own price. So we sometimes call it the own price elasticity of demand. And the formula for calculating the coefficient of price elasticity is one I hopefully you're familiar with. It's the percentage change in the quantity demanded of good X divided by the percentage change in the price of good X. Now, there are lots of videos on price elasticity of demand on the YouTube channel, including the factors that determine the uh, different elasticity of demand for different products. We're not going to focus on that. I just want to think about how you can apply the concept. When might the bell start ringing in an assessment thinking, right, maybe I can make a, a comment on elasticity of demand. Before we do that, uh, the key word is the coefficient of elasticity. Elasticity is essentially just a number. So, for example, if the coefficient of PED is zero, then we say that demand is perfectly price inelastic. Not, not perfectly inelastic, but price inelastic. So of course, there are other factors that can affect elasticity, different types of elasticity. If the coefficient is less than one, demand is price inelastic. If it's greater than one, a coefficient of more than one, demand is price elastic. And if it's infinity, demand is perfectly price elastic. There is, of course, one where demand is, so the elasticity coefficient is one. And we would say that demand has unitary price elasticity. So we were thinking in class a few days ago about the ways in which the, the areas of the syllabus, the specifications, if you like, where elasticity is, is a kind of key thing to really have sort it out and become confident on in your revision. So here are some micro applications. This is not an exhaustive list, by the way. It's just an attempt to give you a few ideas and just maybe do a bit of revision along the way. So there's lots of ways you'd be expected to use your elasticity of demand. Um, if you go back to your, your year 12 economics, first year economics, A level and IB, you'll be thinking about elasticity of demand when you look at the impact of the effectiveness of things like indirect taxes or government subsidies. So, for example, when demand is priced inelastic, uh, a tax on the supplier, well, often they can then pass on most of that tax to the consumer. Whereas if, the, if demand is price elastic, it's, it's harder for the supplier to pass the tax on and they might have to absorb the tax uh, in, in lower profit margins. If you get questions on environmental taxation, green interventions, carbon trading, carbon taxes. Uh, clearly, the, the coefficient of elasticity of demand will determine the extent to which, a, for example, a carbon tax is effective in bringing down the quantity of CO2 emissions. If the carbon trading price goes up from 20 euros to 40 euros, does that genuinely lead to a cut in emissions? Well, of course, it depends on the price elasticity of demand for carbon permits. So there's quite a bit of your year 12 economics where you'll be looking to bring elasticity, price elasticity into the answers. Just be aware of that. Make sure you really revise this well now. Certainly help in the weeks to come. A really important, tremendously important application is the link between the coefficient of price elasticity of demand and the revenue of a business. I cannot stress this enough. It's one of those ones which examiners test year in, year out. We're going to go through this in a second or two on, on the presentation here. Uh, we'll talk about price discrimination as well, and we'll also bring in some uh, some applications of price elasticity to uh, market structures, and in particular, contestable markets. So, a uh, bit of revision. Uh, keep in mind, there are special videos on each of these. I'll try and post some links in the comments section. But it's crucial you understand that the e, the coefficient of elasticity uh, varies along a straight line demand curve. At the top, at high prices, a falling price from P1 to P2 will lead to an elastic price response, causing total revenue to go up. You can see this because the blue area, you lose that revenue from selling at a cheaper price. You cut price from P1 to P2, but you gain the yellow area, Q1 to Q2, you're gaining some quantity, you're gaining some sales, aren't you? 
And in fact, if you do the maths, the, the percentage change in price is quite small. The percentage change in demand is quite high. So you're going to get an elastic coefficient, coefficient of greater than one. Whereas demand is price inelastic towards the bottom of the demand curve. And here, uh, falling price from P3 to P4, uh, yes, you're selling a little extra. Sales expand from Q3 to Q4. But can you see you lose the blue area because you're selling at a lower price per unit? You gain the yellow bit, shaded area, but it's not as big as the blue bit. Total revenue will go down. And again, the percentage price changes here are quite big, whereas the percentage quantity changes are quite small. So you're going to get a low coefficient for elasticity. This is important, this relationship between elasticity of demand and total revenue. And for a firm that wants to maximise their total revenue, well, they're looking for a point where the marginal Revenue MR is zero, as shown in this diagram. Please, please do revise this important topic. Total revenue is maximised, where marginal revenue is zero. That is at the mid point of the demand curve, uh, halfway down the demand curve, with a, uh, an elasticity of demand around that point of one, a uh, coefficient of one. And here's a slightly more complex diagram. Put some cost curves on there to show that a business that wants to maximise their revenue will be where marginal revenue is zero. Uh, they're making some profit, but it's not quite the maximum profit that you could make. The total revenue is the area underneath the demand curve. Normally, for most firms, the revenue maximising output, uh, shown there by the yellow blob, is to the right of the profit maximising output, where MC cuts MR. Another application of price elasticity of demand is in market structures and there's lots of good examples we'll pick out two uh, you may have come across the market structure known as monopolistic competition here's a short run dynamic many firms in the market each producing differentiated products uh, free entry and exits a lot of price and non-price competition and because there's many products in the market the demand curve is fairly price elastic and uh, this is an equilibrium uh, output Q1 for the firm where marginal cost meets marginal revenue. Price P1 is above C1, so the firm is making some super normal profit. So demand is likely to be price elastic in monopolistic competition. Of course, as new firms and new products enter the market, uh, you often get a situation, this is the long run equilibrium. I've drawn the average revenue curve ART who is more elastic. So a flatter trajectory, more shallow gradient, uh, because there are more firms in the market and more differentiated products for people to choose from. And of course, the entry of new firms, let me go back a slide and show you, the entry of new firms, the profits get competed away. The profits get competed away by the entry of new firms into, into the market. But again, here, in, in this kind of market structure, many competing suppliers suggests quite a strong price elasticity of demand because it's, it's very easy to switch from one product to another and that brings down the pricing power of a firm. I said I'd mention price discrimination. This isn't the full, full diagram. It's just, it's just a nice one to show how if you split a market into two on the left hand side, a fairly elastic demand with a price of P1 selling Q1. Consumers price sensitive, whereas on the right hand side, consumers have a greater willingness and ability to pay. The demand there is more price inelastic. And of course, you can take advantage of that by charging price P2. We're assuming that the costs of supply in the market are the same for both groups. Key point here, I'm sure you've revised price discrimination. If you haven't, please do so. Uh, that price elasticity of demand, the different differences in that between groups, is one of the key factors that determines the, uh, the success or potential revenue and profit from, from price discrimination. And another really good example is peak and off-peak pricing. So let's say, for example, this is the, know, the supply of whatever, <laughs> hotels, skis, ski resorts, whatever it is, theme parks. I've drawn the marginal cost curve. The supply curve is becoming more inelastic as you get towards, if you like, capacity. So the marginal cost may start to go up, having to pay overtime and things to workers. Notice there the demand, average revenue, average and marginal revenue at the peak times is much higher than at off-peak times. In fact, the demand at peak times is more inelastic. Uh, an outward shift in the demand curve 
makes the demand more inelastic in part because the percentage changes are smaller because the quantities are greater. Whereas the demand at off-peak times is, is more price elastic. Consumers are not willing and able to pay as much um, for, for the product. What about the macroeconomic applications? I mean, there are some. Apologies if I missed some out, but here's a couple that I think are definitely worth including. The Marshall Learner Condition. Have you covered this in your vision? Uh, hopefully it rings a bell. It's to do with what happens to the trade balance of a country, the balance of trade in goods and services, uh, in the immediate and then the sort of next phase after a currency falls in value. Either a floating currency depreciates or a, a fixed currency is devalued. And uh, it's really quite an important idea. Uh, we'll come back to that in a second. Uh, of course, you can definitely talk about elasticity demand when you get a, a question on protectionism and tariffs. That's a good one to use. If you get a question on monetary policy, is, is demand sensitive to the rate of interest, which essentially is a price? Uh, or is there, is there a liquidity trap when interest rates don't really have much effect on demand? Uh, what about, uh, generally speaking, the, the value of elasticity and the impact of a changing exchange rate on the value of exports and imports? So the J-curve uh, shows a possible time lag between a falling depreciating currency and an improved trade balance. And uh, essentially, initially, the elasticities of demand for exports and imports are quite low. So you end up spending more on imports and not getting much extra export demand. So initially, the trade deficit may actually get bigger in the period immediately following a currency depreciation. But over time, provided that the price elasticity of demand for exports summed with the price elasticity of demand for imports, providing those two elasticities are greater than one, over time, other things being the same, uh, a currency depreciation could help to cause a net improvement in the trade balance once the Marshall learning condition has been fulfilled. And here's the tariff diagram. Just to round off, here's a good diagram. Again, there's loads of videos on tariffs. Uh, we have some separate videos on how to build the tariff diagram. So apologies if this is coming a bit, bit more detailed than you, you would want. But clearly the impact of a tariff, the effect of a tariff, in this case steel, uh, the world price after the tariff. The impact depends in part on the elasticity, the price elasticity of demand for domestic users of steel. And also, of course, it depends on the price elasticity of supply of the domestic steel producers. Either way, if you get a question on tariffs, a uh, great opportunity for good analysis and evaluation, and the impact depends on the coefficient of price elasticity of demand. So what am I saying? I am saying that please do spend a good amount of time really getting getting confident on what elasticity means, how you measure it, uh, what factors influence it, and crucially, how you can apply the coefficients of elasticity in whichever assessment questions come your way. Okay, thank you very much indeed.